Hi and welcome to show 15, a very special show this week because it's the first snippet of our interview with the legend that is John Shoda. Yeah definitely, we had him in uh, in the shed a uh, couple of days back uh, and uh, we had an epic, epic uh, chat and interview with the man and I have to say it was the most fascinating nights I can honestly yeah. remember, absolutely gold, gold and what a, what a lovely fella as well. Yeah, so you know Ourselves and Mr. DJ Format were in the shed, all cramped in with the man. And because it's so long, we would just do snippets in our show. And the whole thing will be there for your viewing pleasure. Two hours, 25 minutes on Mr. Format's website. We'll have a link from our site and everything like that. Yeah. Very special. So yeah. to start this week, we're just going to play all, all uh, John Schroeder produced tunes this week. That's right. And we're starting, Chris. Yeah, this is uh, the furthest. Yeah, this is my favourite, personal favourite John Schroeder track uh, from... The Richard Taito uh, album. What a guy! What a cool guy! And um, and I have to say, I love this. It just builds and builds and builds. And John was actually saying uh, in the interview that this was basically about a bird that's flown. I think he met a woman. So yes, uh, but brilliant, epic, epic, epic funk, uh, epic, epic sounds. Excellent, excellent. So um, what we're going to do is uh, go on and go through some of the things that he's produced as well as uh, some of the things that he's actually made himself. We're going to try and keep it in, the, in our normal format in the, you know, break of the week and theme of the week, but it's all going to be John Schroeder. People probably watching Love Some on Day, so you know, we thought we'd play Brothers on the Slide. Excellent. <laughs> So, I mean, I've, I've loved this song for years, and I think, um, like a lot of people, when people first heard Samondo, they thought they were a US group, no one thought they were English, and, um, and as we found out, they actually did make it a lot bigger in the US than they did in the UK, which is a bit of a travesty really, but hey, you know, I'm sure they made more money over there anyways, but um, yeah, I mean, this song captures everything that's British about what was going on in the music scene, I think, in the early 70s, you know, there's this almost ska, almost reggae, soul, psychedelic, it's absolutely everything that was coming out of the, of the UK at the time. Top, top tune. So anyway, that brings us nicely into our first snippet, not normal interview, just a snippet of it. Snippet. Um, the man himself. Yeah, the man himself is Mr John Schroeder. So, John, we... Uh, yes, we, we weren't quite sure uh, where to start this, but we're very pleased to have you here. Yeah, I'm really pleased to be here. <laughs> and yeah, a, a, as we explained to you a little bit before we switched the cameras on, you know, a lot of our audience that will be watching this particular show will, will be familiar with the name John Schroeder from, you know, Sounds Orchestral and the John Schroeder Orchestra yeah. because of the funky cover versions that you did and, you know, yeah. mixing the classical and the jazz. Yeah. Um, and obviously you discovered and produced Simandi. Yes. Uh, the UK funk band that people know very well. I'll, uh, oh, yes. yeah, it's on there. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Hold up, just to, to give a little flash. Um, well, uh, they 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 came across my paths uh, really um, unknowingly. It was just by chance that I was going down to listen to another band in the basement of oh some strip club in Solo, I think it was. <laughs> or, if my memory serves me right, and. The band I was going to see were there, but there was all this noise going on and this music, and they said, like, everyone was having a party, you know. It was a, I pushed down the door and it was packed with all these people who were bopping around to this music, and I couldn't see where the music was coming from. All I knew is that the rhythm, the rhythms that I was hearing were incredibly effective. <laughs> and, I thought, and the brass was violently out of tune. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what I mean? And once I got through all the crowds and all the rest of it and got to somewhere where this was coming from, and there was these guys just sort of ad living. It was like a, just a party of just family and friends and so on got together for a jam. And it was just amazing. I mean, the effectiveness of, of, of these rhythm. Yeah. And of course, then I got to into them as to who was doing it and all the rest of it. And we got it. And then they knew that I was a, you know, a record company exec, and my label, and all the rest of it. <laughs> and I didn't know what I'd fallen into. Yeah. 
And I thought, I like what I hear. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something in the studio with them, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got them and, and went through the material <coughs> and so on, and decided to put down three or four tracks in the studio, just as a sort of demos, if you like, initially. There weren't anything else than that. And of course, they were really thrilled to do that, and you know, and. But they were a nightmare, they were completely all over the place, they didn't know where they were and all the rest, they were all were interested in playing this music and they did it for fun, you know. And the, the band did gig, but not seriously yeah. at that time. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> we got them in the studio and we did these four tracks, and um, of which the message was one, dare I say. Yeah. I just felt there was something there. Now I used to go to Medem. Mm. Every single year, I was, I'm sure you've heard of me yeah, the yeah. Where, in Cannes, where all the music business guys go. I went every single year because that's where I got my money from to make my next year's product. From. <laughs> I used to take the productions that I'd done, the mm. new productions, go to meet him, have someone really think, "Oh, great stuff, John," and upfront money for me, mm. and take my productions, and I've got the money to make my next year's product. You see, yeah. I walked through the customs front. And, and this was foreign. This was foreign labels yeah, yeah. licensing your yeah, your right. releases. I yeah, I walked through customers with sixteen thousand pounds in cash in my case one time. <laughs> one time. Nice. That sixteen thousand pounds years ago was worth a lot of money. Yeah, made my product for the next year. Thank you very much. <laughs> and that's how Fine Sam Andy actually became financed through the money that I'm activated through Medem. Well, mm. now Medem became very instrumental in what happened to uh, Samani because um, I was very close to a guy called Marvin Schlachter who uh, had a label called Janus associated yes, with Chess yes. Records, right? Yeah. And when I was at Pi, a lot of Pi products went through Chess Records, it was released in the States, yeah. but I kept my friendship up going with Marvin Schlachter and Marvin even released Sounds Orchestral in uh, America, you know, so he knew Castafay, he knew all the stuff that I did and we yeah. remained friends. And Bowman was very much into black music, yeah. and I took a, a cassette of of these tracks over to meet them, and I bumped into Marvin. He said, Marvin, Marvin said, what are you doing, John? I said, well, I'm just messing about with a group, I've got my own label now. And he said, oh, fantastic. I said, well, it's not really, it's a headache of money. Or and he says, I know, I know, well, let me hear what you're doing. What, what music are you doing? I said, well, I've got this black band called Sam Andy, you know. And he said, oh, well, I said, I've got a cassette. He said, well, leave it with me. I said, OK, let me know. Anyway, I forgot nothing about it. Four weeks later, I get an email. Love, Samandi. <laughs> not, not an email <laughs> in those days. I mean, not an email. I'm thinking of today's. No, yeah. email, like, uh, uh, what do they call? A te a te telegram? telegram? Yeah, Telegram. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Telegram. Carrier pigeon. <laughs> love, love Samandi. Love the message. You know, yeah. Want a release. Yeah. And that was the start of all. He went absolutely bananas about it, and they released it, and, and the message became a sort of underground type record. Mm. It was uh, played all sorts of stations. It got an incredible reaction from uh, the sort of college movements and things. All mm. this, and, and then it broke big, and it started to make, make broke the national charts. They, they really got shit. They got really scared about going to America. <laughs> got in trouble with the wives, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, and they had no act, nothing put together. No. Yeah, they'd just been jamming yeah, previously, been jamming, right? So just we had to. They had to put it. I said to Patrick uh, Patterson, who was the lead, like for the lead guy. I said, "You've got to get an act together, guys. You know, this is. This is we're going to America." Yeah. Oh, don't worry, John. Don't you know? Anyway, there's a lot of dissension amongst the group because they got flack from all around about going to America. Yeah. I mean, for the, nobody's here mm. going mm. to America. And not only that, doing a tour with Al Green. Yeah, right? yeah. Support wow. band, Al Green. <laughs> oh, man, it was absolutely terrible. Yeah. But I went over with them and uh, it went, they went down the store. They did, a, they did a, an audition. Uh, they hired a club, Marvin Schlechter hired a club in New York, yeah. and they played that club and they brought all the press down in there, and then people couldn't spell the name Samania, there was an S I M I, and there was a lot of, there were, there were, there were um, cartoon strips about it. I, I mean, it was amazing what happened. Yeah. You know, it was really, really amazing. And uh, and uh, we, we went around with Al Green and all the rest of it. I, mean, I remember that we played the Apollo in Harlem. Yeah. Oh. And uh, Al Green's manager was white, but yeah. in those days you could not go into Harlem. 
yeah. you're not if you were, you know. But Al Green's manager was like the only person, he was God. <laughs> like when he went in the limousine with Al Green, I was like, oh, yes sir. You know, <laughs> he said, John, you ride in the limo with me, yeah. Sir Mandy, and uh, Al Green, you'll be okay. If you're on your own, you wouldn't get anywhere near. <laughs> and then, of course, we made a, uh, we made another album, uh, which was recorded in Chicago. Yeah. I recorded, um, I think, the second album at uh, Chess Studios. Yeah, um, I was there Chicago, the other day. In the same <laughs> studio where um, I stayed on. Wow. the Rolling Stones were. We were yeah. standing in exactly the same position yeah. as the Stones, you know. And I never forget. Uh, they wanted, uh, the session was due one of the sessions was due to start at 2.30 and uh, half the band weren't there. I had to go out looking for them. <laughs> they, were in a, they were in a strip club somewhere. <laughs> I was there the other day. Video. <laughs> 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 you know, I had to pull them out and say, you're in the studio, for like, God's sake. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we, and we made this album with a, an American engineer and then we took it back to England and mixed it in England and so on. And so they I just wrote the material while they were basically yeah. on on that first tour. They, they wrote very, the material very for the second. They were prolific in those days. Yeah, mm -hmm. they wrote very, very rhythmically, very prolifically. Uh, incredible writing technique they had. I mean, yeah. you know, even to this day. I mean, when you if you, if you get to me, talk to me about what I'm doing with Samantha today, mm -hmm. it is eye opening. It is incredible. But here we go with brass. <laughs> Such an infectious tune, it's, uh, it's amazing. And as John was saying, you know, there's sort of like key changes and signatures in it are just so weird and sometimes off, but it absolutely makes it work beautifully. Which is such a such a cool band. Alaska 7. Alaska 7, original Alaska 7, yeah. Well, here's our break of the week from Mr. John Schroeder. It's, the, uh, it's a cover of the Lee Daugherty song, Get Out of My Life Woman. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant tune and heavy, heavy drums. This is the original on the um, uh, Piccadilly label which John worked for uh, back when this was made, I think in about 66, 67. Um, and it was re-released later on on the Marble Arch label as well. Um, she talks about a lot in the interview yeah, as well. Yeah, so, so, yeah. yeah. Get Out of My Life Woman. That's right. So now we're going to go on to our theme of the week and, uh, and, and say our goodbye for, uh, this must be what, episode 15? 15. 15, yeah. so yeah, anyway. Yeah. You got, if you loved the interview, which I'm sure you did, and you don't have it yet, you've got to get his book, Sex and Violins. I've read it twice now, it is unbelievable. You'll see how infectious the guy is when he's uh, chatting and telling his anecdotes and that. The book just flies, it flows, it's a great, great book. And, Anybody that's interested in the music industry or wants to work in the industry or does work in the industry, yeah. an essential read. Theme of the week. Theme of the week. We've played a track from this album before, or should we say that? But it's such a good album. Format played a track from this album before. But yeah, it's that's such right. a good album. Cost you about 60 quid? Well, uh, might be able to get it for a little bit, a little bit less. Yeah. But, uh, this is uh, John Schroeder's take on Shaft's big score. Next week, we'll have a second snippet of the John Schroeder interview. Yeah, totally. And then after that, we'll put the whole thing up. You can all see it. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, can't gush about the man enough, to be honest. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mr. Format. Yeah, because uh, without you, you really did actually sort of like format it all together quite well. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I have to say it was a, it was a pleasure having all four all four of us in the shed of dreams, you know. Um, also, want to give a, a little shout out to Johnny Trunk for this lovely uh, DJ not for sale T-shirt. I love it; it's great. But, uh, anyway, see you next week. See you next week.